first, before we dive into the mod disc and learn about all of its intricate details, I want to show you what you can do with it. ModDisc.xml General Description One of the main components of the modding process is learning about the ModDisc.xml file that is located in a mod. Now, if you're digging around inside your game files for ModDisc, the only one you're really going to find is for the maps, and for the game in general, because only mods require a mod description. I hope that makes sense. This file tells the game engine what type of mod it is and what specializations will be loaded with the mod. You can add extra multiple mods using one mod disk. It is the beginning spot for installing extra Lua scripts to expand on the customization of the mod. You will know you are looking at a proper mod disk when you see the following XML declaration at the top of the file, as you can see there. The mod disk uses these XML terminologies that we covered in the prior video of what is XML. And if you haven't seen that, or if you haven't read that section, please go back and check that out. But it will be relying on the aspect of the wheels and the attribute tags that we talked about there. Little side note when you're reading code, if you look to the right, it'll say comment, but it is blocked out with a exclamation point, few dashes, well, when you see this, it's a comment within the XML file that it's ignored when the mod is put in game. This can be used to make notes or block out code for testing. Mod Desk Desk Version General Description As the game evolves and updates its software, it will allow for more desk versions to be used. When making a mod, make sure to check the disk version at the top of the log text that is produced in your Farming Simulator folder. If you don't know how to find your log text, I recommend you watch this video that you'll see up in the cards right now. Now you can see the progression here of Moss Disk versions from 2011 all the way up to now. And uh, it seems to be changing pretty rapidly, so check this pretty often as it could lead to issues and errors when loading your mod. And some of the errors that it could cause could be an error in the log that says error missing disk version attribute or the mod just won't load all right gentlemen so we're going to start off with these common tags by reading them one by one and explaining what each tag means starting off with the author this is all the tags that's going to be located inside of the mod disk trying to start how it normally would be set when you first open it up so the author, the person or group that created or edited this mod, if a name is already present, then add yours after the first creditors. The version, this is mandatory item to be accepted on ModHub. Use the 1.0.0.0 format to decipher between other releases or updates. Use four digits for the version, example 1.0.0.0. Title, name your mod file in English. No version numbers, German, or advertising in the, in the file name for ModHub acceptance. Description. Short description of your mod and localization can be used. Icon file name. The picture when selecting mods to load into the game. Image should be a 256 by 256 pixels and saved in a DDS format. This we will cover in greater detail later on. Multiplayer support, you can just always set this to true. Set the attribute to true if your mod is intended to be used in multiplayer mode. If not, but I usually put mine as true. 
I'd like to dive back into the description really quick, but looking at somebody who's way better because they always put their stuff on Mod Hub, and that would be 82 Studios. And this is his TLX 9000, which I think at the time of recording this, nobody else really has. But 82 does a phenomenal job at writing up descriptions way better than I've ever offered in any of my mods. So if you're going to look at perfect mod descriptions, I would definitely take a look at 82 Studios. Much love, David. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the store items. This is the place where you tell the game what XMLs slash mods you want to load in the game. And we're going to take a look at two different scenarios for loading store items, one with maps and one with vehicles. Now, first I have open Paradise Map, which is a new map I'm working on, and it's publicly available right now. You can check that out in the cards, but it doesn't actually have a call for any store items inside of this XML, but it does here inside of the map XML. It'll reach in for a whole XML that's dedicated to store item. So I chased down the XML for the map and then found the store items. And here is where it tells the game to load every single one of these files here. And then you can also see I use the uncomment section there to block out some while I'm making the map. Now let's take a look at 82 Studios beautiful TLX store item section located just in its mod disk. It doesn't require an extra XML document just right there in the mod disk. Also, while you're looking at the store items, you'll notice XML file name. This attribute is asking where exactly is that file located at, and we will give it directions telling it where to go, such as attachments, and that's where it is. I hope that makes sense. If not, ask a question down in the comments. All right, time to get into the fun stuff, extra source files. This is used to assist in other operations you're wanting to script in your mod. This is covered in greater detail, but we will tap on a few things right now. When making this super cart mod here, I used a categorizer and a mod change title that I called for using the extra source files to create a new category and a mod change title to racing and paradise racing. So this has its own separate choice when you're in game gonna buy it. Another tag you're going to experience is vehicle types, and this gets to be fun as well because you can make your own custom vehicle types, but there are many different types of vehicles in the game that allow certain specializations to be used based off what is allowed with that vehicle type. And these are usually predefined with giants deep inside of their coding, but you can, and I'll show you right now, make your own custom one, and we'll cover that, what that looks like real quick. All right, around the very top, right underneath the 110 tags, you'll see vehicle types, and this is actually looking at David's 82 Studios TLX again, because it's awesome. But he has made a custom type here. We're using the parent tractor, but he has renamed it, and he'll be reaching for this name inside of his vehicle XML, TLX Phoenix. But he added the specialization of foldable, and he's done this several different times with different types here. And that's because the in-game tractor does not have the option to run the code foldable so you could put the code inside of your xml but if the vehicle type doesn't allow that specialization it 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 won't run an error it just won't run and the reason why that code would still work and not run an error is because you're following all the xml syntax rules that you learned in the previous video and if you didn't click on the card right above right now and go learn a little bit about xml Later on, we're going to cover vehicle types in way greater depth, but I would like to mention here that the way that this named here, the TLX Phoenix, it has to be named identical to that inside of the vehicle XML. Uh, that vehicle type has to match up or the game won't recognize that that XML is that vehicle type you created. Now from my experimentation, you can do this as well with placeables using this code here as somebody has done with the speed camera. Now it gets a little bit tricky when we start talking about specializations because you can get kind of confused in the mod disk right when you very first get started. So let's look at the UH60 mod disk where I use the levitator sprayer script to allow this thing to fly. So I'm basically gonna load it up with the source files 
And then from there, we're going to load it up with the specializations and register the specialization with the game that's located inside of the source file, which now allows me to assign the specialization to the custom vehicle type that I made that is referenced from my vehicle XML, where I will be allowed to install the code that is associated with whatever you're installing. I've also seen code that allows you to install specializations on placeables. So that's pretty neat. And there it is on screen. Next, we'll be learning about the L10N. Oh, that's a mouthful. It's basically how you call for text and different localizations. All right, looking right at the very top here, I'm going to walk you through everything that this means here with the input toggle on and off. So that is going to be the call name. So if I said, hey, every time I said a tag word, the, if I said the, I wanted you to tell me this sentence. That's basically what that is. Next up, you'll see DE, and that stands for German, and it is a part of localization. Localization is uh, translating to other languages so other cultures can use your mods. And you'll see it continues on there with EN and PL. And I don't exactly remember what all of them are, but I can definitely tell you that there's a ton of them and it's wise to do quite a few of them. But if you continue on there, you will see EN and that is basically where you'll put your English if you're writing this in English. And at the very end, you'll notice it has a closing tag of text. Make sure you close each tag. You will also see a different type in some mods, but a lot of cases this is used in maps where it's calling for a certain list of translations. So you can actually have these separate from the mod disk. Uh, this is something that 82 Studios does with a lot of his mods to just keep them clean. Each language has its own little XML file. And when you open it up, this is kind of what you're looking at. And it has these configuration sets and all this stuff. And a lot of times they can use them for calling items and listing items such as here where you can see in, under configurations all the different names and choices and all that stuff usually always run through the L10N configurations including here on the controls menu you can custom control those as well and last our brief overview of actions input bindings action binding and bindings the, the, these get a tad confusing but it relies on the L10 and a few other things we're gonna read through it, show you an example, and just let you know that I will be covering this later on down in the book in a lot more detail because it deserves that. So first up, actions. Used to create callback names of actions. Input binding. This tag allows you to bind multiple actions to inputs under it. Action binding. This will bind the action callback name to a input. Example, key X. Binding, this binds the set action to the input key of your choice. So let's take a quick sneak peek and see how they made the action toggle on and off. As you can see here, they created the action name toggle on and off. Then they took that action name, went up into input binding and made action binding, created the action toggle on and off, and then binded the device to the keyboard and mouse default input the less than sign. So in the mod XML, it would be calling for this action. You basically registered something for it to do and calls for that L10N tag, what it, whatever it says there in the localization. In the case here, it says Jake break. Well, guys, thanks. And that's all for this episode. I'll see you in the next one in the store data. And here I'll leave you with a video you can watch of uh, some of the opening footage of when I took Tommy Boy out to test the oil rig for the first time. Thanks for watching. Hit that like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.